<laughs> um, how's Garrett Dellinger's status heading into this weekend? He's questionable. Okay. And um, and with and with Chris, how's he sort of uh, progressing throughout this week? He's out. Okay. Um, and then uh, just offensively in the way you guys are trying to sort of revitalize, I wouldn't say revitalize, but try to work on this running game a little bit. Like how has the running game looked like in practice and, and just, just the progress of that? Yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> I think from a running game standpoint, I think really, you know, as we continue to, um, you know, unwrap the running game from last week, it, it really was situational more than anything else. It was, you know, our short yardage running, situational running. And I think, you know, as you and I talked about it uh, earlier in the week, it's it's really trying not to be in a, such a predictable formation, um, you know, having a little bit more balance to the, the offensive sets. I like what we do. I like our players up front. I'm very confident that, you know, as time moves on, you know, the offense, and in particular the running game, is going to be the strength. Are you one more injury from finding out what players on the roster have any running back experience in high school or middle school, or are you there yet? We're there. We're there. I heard you have some experience. So, um, yeah, we, we – uh, you know, we feel pretty good right now where we're at in terms of the running back position. Obviously, we feel sick about – John, um, you know, it's just sometimes you think about this and and it just wonder, you know, how can this be fair in any way to this poor kid? I mean, he's just overcome so many obstacles and, you know, he's in a non-contact situation and he sticks his foot in the ground and, and, he, and he tears his knee up. And so it's just... It was just so disappointing. He had surgery today, successful surgery, um, and Prince did. Princeton Malbrew had surgery today, so obviously we we've lost both of them. But yeah, it's it's it was so disappointing, and um, we feel so bad for him and, and his uh, his family. But you know, John has overcome so much. We're so proud of what he's accomplished in getting his degree from LSU and. Um, he's going to be successful in life, and um, you know we'll see what the future holds for him. Hey, coach, got two questions for you. One, uh, it's just two season opening games in a row that you've kind of been stopped on fourth down to start the game. So I'm just curious, especially early in the game where you don't really know what the game's going to end up looking like. Just what kind of factors do you guys consider there? And also, uh, just wondering if you had any thoughts on the governor and state legislators kind of suggesting that Mike the Tiger should be on the field? So I, I don't give any credence to thinking about what happened the year before relative to fourth down. And you just bringing it up is the first that I've given it any thought. Each situation is its own situation relative to fourth down. And I think I alluded to this earlier, fourth and three is a go for us. It's been a go for me, you know, most of my career, if not my entire career. So I, I don't second guess it. Um, I wish we executed better. And, and I think in that situation, we needed to coach the play better. Um, I have no problem with the 11 players on the field. They brought an inside blitz. Um, it was difficult. Uh, relative to the formation we were in to get that inside blitz picked up with our tight end. Um, and I think that falls on us as coaches. But the call itself and it being fourth and three, I have no questions about making that call again. The execution and the, and, and the way we coached it, we need to do a better job moving forward. I, I heard about it all in, on Twitter. I, I don't have any comments, obviously, on that. That, that is something that I'll let our university and, and um, those that are much more educated on that to, to come up with a statement and make decisions on that. Um, that. That is something that I just don't have enough information on. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we're coach right here. Uh, just with the running back situation now, you're, you're, you're down to Caleb and Josh, and, and I'm just curious how Caden Durham has looked in practice. I yeah. imagine he's going to be involved now going forward. Uh, yeah, he yeah. certainly will. He'll be involved. He had a good week, and, 
you know, I think all three backs, um, you know, really what we tried to do is tailor the offense for them in terms of giving them the kind of plays that they feel really comfortable with um, and, and setting the offense accordingly for those three guys. So, you know, we feel really good about where we're at. And obviously, we'd love to have John. Obviously, that's not going to be the case moving forward. And, and, and maybe we'll investigate, you know, moving forward. Is, is there another, you know, candidate for that position? But that's where we're at right now, and we feel good about it. What kind of feedback have you gotten from Blake Baker and uh, Joe Sloan just kind of about the headset communication and how it went week one and how you guys might adjust in week two and the rest of the season? Um, you know, I'm on the headset, so I can hear all of the communication from the green dot as well. Uh, it went pretty good. We, we had a little bit of um, static on the defensive side of the ball, which made it a little bit more difficult. So we have signalers for defense as well. Uh, that back it up. We do have them on offense. I thought it went a lot smoother in terms of the communication on the offensive side of the ball, but we kind of thought that was going to be the case going in. I think some of the things that we have to do is we have to have our housekeeping in terms of getting in and out with the play call and getting lined up it needs to be a little bit more efficient on offense. Um, and, and I think that that's what we worked on this week. But by and large, it, it went as what we had expected. Sorry, right here. Just wanted to yeah. follow up on the running backs. Just balancing the touches, obviously, between those three. You want to keep those guys' legs as fresh as possible. Just is, is there a plan in place over the next couple of weeks of how you guys want to go about doing that? And yes. just how, how do you how do you go go about you know, making sure? Well, these I'll guys let are the fresh? secret out because you guys are, want want the information, and I don't want to be that guy. We moved Juwan Johnson to running back, and uh, so he he's getting some carries and touches this week, and. Um, you know, I think he's going to win the Heisman. Um, and so you guys can write that down right now. Uh, we might as well get this out there. Um, no, he's not going to. I'm just kidding with you. But um, he, he's going to play some running back for us, and he gives us the fourth back and, and gives us a little bit more balance there. And, you know, he's an exciting player. Um, he can do a lot of things. Um, we felt like we could shuffle some things around on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and, and begin to get him involved. Obviously, there's, there's going to be a learning curve on some things. Um, there's a learning curve on some of those things, but certainly uh, I think he can do some things for us this weekend. Coach, right, up, right in the middle. Um, you just unveiled a new addition of the practice facility in Tiger Stadium. Obviously, has a lot of upgrades coming for the season. Um, so I'm curious with all NIL here and revenue sharing on the horizon. Do you think that those two things might change the way that recruits and athletes think about facilities um, going forward in the future? Um, you know, all of these enhancements, um, you know, each one of them hits a different note, right? The Wellness Center here obviously is focused strictly on recovery, focused strictly on the student athlete versus Tiger Stadium, which is really fan experience. And, and I think they were timely and they were needed, right? I think, you know, we're at 100 years of Tiger Stadium, but, you know, we needed maybe, uh, you know, a little bit of an upgrade there relative to what we could do with our boards and um, making it more interactive and certainly providing more of a fan experience, uh, lighting, uh, acoustics. I think that was very important. Um, we want to keep the fans in the stadium as much as we can uh, involved in the game. And I think that that's going to enhance it. The Wellness Center, as I mentioned, is, is, is for our student athletes. All of those go to, you know, being part of a um, world-class um, football program. And, and that's what other programs are trying to do. So I think this is much more about continuing to build your program to be one of the best in the country. And um, I think, you know, Scott Woodward sees that, um, recognizes that, and, and is always willing to do the things necessary to stay in the forefront of that. Brian, I guess a two-part question for you. Uh, for a guy like Aaron Anderson to be able to take advantage of an opportunity when it presents itself for him, have you just liked the way he's progressed since maybe since you guys reported back to campus for practice? And then to, I guess the second part of that is uh, 
you know, Kamari and Pimpton. Can you just speak on like what you guys saw on the film from him in the in the USC game and just kind of how he how he played the other night? Yeah, I'm very pleased with Aaron's progress, and 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 progress is is measured by um, his focus, his um, ability to frame the ball in a much more, um, I'd say, consistent manner, um, and 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 clearly the explosiveness that he brings as an athlete but you know it's 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 both right it's it's bringing the athleticism but then bringing the teaching and the knowledge of the position and he's now bringing that other piece i think he was just relying on athletic ability last year and that only gets you so far when everybody else is a really good player too um so i've i've really liked that um you know kp is it's probably where Aaron was last year, you know, a lot of ability, but he's learning his way through it. And um, he's done some really good things and he's learned about the things that he needs to get better at. So uh, I would say, you know, there's, there's a lot of similarities in terms of where KP is relative to where Aaron was last year. And, you know, we hope that that progress continues. Hey, Coach, uh, just looking at the past game going into this weekend, is there going to be anything specifically different about it, specifically against Nichols and their pass defense, which can be good at creating turnovers and problems? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're moving into a, a different week. We've put that game behind us. Um, you know, it's a new opponent. Uh, they play different coverages. Um, they do different things. So, you know, you, you build off of what you do the week before, and but you still be who you are and you know we expect our football team to be a better football team this week more consistent um and again attack uh nickel state based upon what they have shown us um you know they're a good defense they're well coached um you know it's a team that that knows how to win you know they win a lot of football games so you know we're gonna have to execute uh, our offense and what we do and, and really concern ourselves with what uh, is important uh, in terms of moving the football, and that is being balanced, running the football and throwing the football down the field. You've said a lot in the past that you guys are kind of in the business of, like, building a championship program, which means, like, you've described it as having players up and down the roster contribute. So after a week one where you did get – contributions up and down the roster but you didn't come out on top like just kind of where where would you say you guys are progressing towards being a championship program you know like a sustainable well look you know everybody everybody is accurate in looking at where you are relative to your record we're 0 and one you know and we lost the football game that we believe we should have won um but that doesn't change the fact that, you know, our football team has um, the foundational principles necessary to be a championship team. And I'm not backing down from the comments that I made that, that this football team's accountable. This football team has the pieces necessary. Um, and we're, we're going to continue to work towards that end. And look, you know, we had a short week. Um, you know, we got in five o'clock in the morning on Monday. These guys didn't make any excuses. They went to work on Tuesday. They worked hard on Wednesday, even though they were fatigued. Had a good day today. Um, this, is, this is a team that recognizes what it takes to win. And they know that they got to put the work in. They got to do the little things the right way. Those are tenants of a championship team. So I continue to see those things. Now I know you have to win football games to be a championship team. Everybody does, um, but that doesn't change my um, feelings about this team. They're going to continue to work hard, and we're going to break through. If I may, just one more on John. How did how did he react to the injury? You know, it's obviously you a think? tough I situation. Mean, devastated, and, and you know, obviously we're holding out hope. Um, you know, but he knew in his heart. Uh, because he's been through it before, right? Um, you know, we were hoping that, you know, it was just a strain. We were hoping that it wasn't, you know, what we thought it would, might be. Um, but he was devastated. 
so, um, you know, we just, again, um, I can tell you that it was a low point um, for all of the coaches um, and everybody surrounding him because it just didn't seem fair. Yeah. All right, thank you.